The Von Braun Wheel, a space station dream and the legacy it inspired. Written and narrated by Isaac Althor, NSS President. Long before we set foot on the moon, one man envisioned an outpost in the sky, a wheel turning above the Earth to make gravity for motion. We often think of space stations as sterile cylinders or boxy clusters of modules like the International Space Station, but once the future looked around, graceful rotating habitats orbiting Earth like great wheels. The most iconic of these is the Von Braun Wheel, a bold vision from the early days of the Space Age, dreamed up by Werner Von Braun, the same man who would later lead NASA's Saturn V program, the wheel was meant to be humanity's first true foothold in space, a place to live, work, and look outward to the stars. Today we'll explore that concept, how it might still shape our future, and the legacy of the man who helped inspire not only moon landings, but entire generations of space advocates, including the National Space Society, which believes not just in exploring space, but developing and settling it, and rotating space habitats like the Von Braun Wheel may be instrumental in letting us make that future happen. The Origins of the Von Braun Wheel Werner Von Braun first proposed the Rotating Wheel space station in the early 1950s, when spaceflight was still the stuff of speculation and science fiction and rockets were still primarily seen as tools of war, vehicles for destruction rather than discovery or creation, something Von Braun knew all too well from his own role during World War II as a German rocket scientist, but in the years that followed, he became a passionate advocate for peaceful space exploration, envisioning rockets that carried people, not bombs, and that could carry humanity to new worlds and brighter futures. His design was detailed in a series of articles published in Collier's Magazine between 1952 and 1954 which brought the concept into the public eye with vivid illustrations and compelling signs. It wasn't just a wheel for astronauts to float around in, it was a working base in space. Spinning to create artificial gravity with spokes and docking hubs, the station was intended to support dozens of crew members for months at a time. The concept became even more familiar thanks to Von Braun's collaboration with Walt Disney. In the 1955 TV special Man in Space, Disney used animation to showcase the Von Braun wheel helping popularize the idea for a new generation. For many viewers it was their first glimpse of real space science, presented not as fantasy but as an achievable goal. Von Braun envisioned the station as a hub for orbital research and a stepping stone to the Moon and Mars. In his mind, the journey into deep space could not begin with a single leap, it had to be built, wheel by wheel, module by module, in low Earth orbit. The Science and Structure of the Von Braun Wheel At the heart of the Von Braun Wheel design is the concept of artificial gravity, something still absent from today's space stations. In a zero-gravity environment, long-term habitation comes with serious risks, muscle atrophy, bone loss, and fluid shifting that affects vision and organ function. Von Braun, borrowing from Potochnik's earlier living wheel idea, was elegantly simple. Spin by rotating the entire structure, the station could use centrifugal force to mimic gravity. Astronauts walking along the outer rim would feel a pull toward the floor, just as they were standing on Earth, except that down would always point outward. The faster the spin and the larger the radius, the stronger the simulated gravity, and contrary to popular belief, gravity doesn't just shut off if you jump up in the air in a rotating habitat. It is also worth remembering that the microgravity astronauts experience in low Earth orbit is the product of centrifugal force counteracting Earth's gravity, not distance from Earth, whose gravity is barely diminished at those altitudes. The original design called for a diameter of about 250 feet, roughly the length of a football field. The wheel would spin at around 3 revolutions per minute to generate gravity roughly equivalent to the Moon's surface gravity, or about one-sixth of Earth's. Later concepts scaled this up for greater comfort and flexibility. The station itself was modular, a ring divided into living quarters, laboratories, and observation decks. The original design and many of its successors used a large number of inflatable structures too. At the center of the wheel, a non-rotating hub would serve as a docking port for arriving spacecraft connected to the habitat rim by long spokes. 
From there, elevators or ladders would carry crew and cargo up and down, between weightless transit and gravity simulated living. It was a bold, elegant vision, one that not only solved real engineering problems, but offered a blueprint for how to build something practical and inspiring, a true habitat in space, not just a cramped outpost. Cultural Legacy and Influence The Von Braun wheel didn't just stay on the drawing board, it imprinted itself on the collective imagination. For decades, it became the archetype of what a space station should look like. Perhaps the most iconic example is the Orbital Station in 2001, A Space Odyssey, which was released in 1968. Stanley Kubrick's vision of this massive, rotating wheel, set to Strauss's Blue Danube, was a direct descendant of Von Braun's design. For many viewers, it represented not just science fiction, but a future that felt inevitable. That vision persisted, from film and television to novels and concept art, the rotating space wheel became a symbol of humanity's maturity in space, a place where we didn't just visit, but lived. It captured something the boxy modules of reality often did not, elegance, symmetry, and the feeling of progress. But it wasn't all fantasy, the wheel's practicality made it attractive to engineers and advocates alike, even today many companies like Vast and Blue Origin are contemplating modernized versions as the foundations for space hotels and long-term orbital habitats. In this way, Von Braun's vision continues to echo through pop culture and aerospace design. It remains one of the most enduring images of what space settlement might look like, not as a far-fetched dream, but as the natural evolution of our presence beyond Earth. Could we build it today? When Von Braun first proposed his rotating wheel, it was a blueprint for a future just out of reach. The technology, materials, and launch systems of the 1950s simply could not deliver the components needed to build something so large in orbit, but today, the gap is narrowing. We now have heavy lift rockets like Falcon Heavy, New Glenn, and the upcoming Starship, which are opposed to lower the cost per kilogram to orbit dramatically. Reusability, robotic construction, and in-space assembly are advancing rapidly, many of the practical hurdles that once made the wheel seem like science fiction are now engineering challenges with potential solutions. The modular and expandable approach Von Braun envisioned fits well with current construction techniques, components could be fabricated on Earth or even 3D printed in orbit, then assembled by crews or autonomous systems. Power could come from solar arrays with closed-loop life support systems supporting long-term habitation. Of course challenges remain. Microgravity assembly, radiation shielding, long-term maintenance, and above all, cost. But what was once a dream beyond reach now lies within the realm of possibility. In fact the biggest shift may be in mindset, seeing large-scale orbital infrastructure not as a future fantasy but as the next step toward becoming a spacefaring civilization. Legacy and ISDC Werner von Braun didn't just dream of space habitats, he championed the broader goal of space settlement. Beyond his engineering work, he helped found the National Space Institute, which would later merge with the L5 Society, champion of the O'Neill Cylinder Space Habitat, into what is now the National Space Society, of which I have the honor to be President. To honor that legacy, the NSS presents the Werner von Braun Memorial Award every other year at the International Space Development Conference. This award recognizes those who have made significant contributions to advancing humanity's future in space. Past recipients include visionaries and missions that push the boundaries of what's possible, people like Elon Musk, Gwen Shotwell, the James Webb Space Telescope team, and the Mars Curiosity rover team. The award reflects the same spirit that drove Von Braun's original vision, bold ambition, backed by real-world achievement. This year, the 2025 award will be presented to Jared Isaacman, accepting on behalf of the entire Polaris Dawn team. As the mission commander, Isaacman not only led the historic Inspiration4 mission, but continues to push the boundaries of private spaceflight through the Polaris program. He represents a powerful bridge between commercial space innovation and public space leadership. We will be honoring him at the International Space Development Conference in Florida this June from the 19th to 22nd, and we hope to see you there. 
you can learn more at isdc.nss.org. Von Braun's wheel may still orbit in our imaginations, but the people we honor today are helping build the path to make it real. If you'd like to be part of that journey, from concept to construction, from dreaming to doing, consider joining the National Space Society. Let's build that future together.